Well, hello everybody. Today we are gonna do our second to last animal of the block, which is a cow. I hope you had fun learning our fun little cow facts yesterday. So we are gonna do not one, but two cows today. One's gonna be big up here in the foreground, and then one will be a smaller one back here in the background. Okay, so we're really just going to kind of focus on the different shapes, because if you get the basic shapes of the cow right, the whole thing is gonna to come together. So we are gonna start with this cow's head. And you can think of, and then this cow's gonna be facing forward towards us. So we're looking right straight on at her head. And you can think of the head of a cow as kind of like a triangle and the corners have kind of been rounded off. I'm just gonna kind of keep adding to this until it's like a size that I like. I want this cow to be pretty big since she's in the front. main lesson animals to be nice and big. So I'm just starting from the center of this shape and then I'm just kind of gradually adding on more and more until it gets to be the size that I like and I think that's going to be pretty good right there. And then for her nose, I'm just gonna do a little oval down here at the bottom of the head. There we go. And then a cow's ears just kinda come straight from the side of their head. There's ear number one. Number two. Kind of made them different sizes. That's fine. You see, that's the beauty of it. I can just go back and make this one a little bigger if I need to. Hey, that's better. Okay. Then we're going to kind of sketch in the front of her chest here. So her neck will kind of come down this way where cows have like really thick necks. Just gonna kind of put in the shape here of her chest and her neck as she's looking forward at us. So kind of an oval, almost a teardrop shape here in the front for our chest. And then as we go along her back, we'll just kind of add in like another little round off of here. And we'll kind of see her back and her hips to the side a little bit, your hind end. So remember cows have kind of those pointy hips. Okay. So our hip kind of comes up to a point at the back here. It comes down. Okay, and then she has her two front legs. Cows have like these really stocky, strong legs. That to be apparent here. And you know, just like our legs, as they get closer up to the trunk of the body, they get thicker, right? That's where all the muscle kind of comes together. 
And then a cow's back legs, of course. Also very strong. Her back leg, as we're looking at her, it doesn't come down as far, right? Because as we look away, oh gosh. <laughs> and that is a first for the YouTube channel, knocking over the tripod. Okay, give me a second. Aren't you glad you got to experience that with me? <laughs> You're like, no, kind of made us seasick. Seeing as I have not set my tripod up quite right and it made it top heavy. But you know what? I'm not starting this video over. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, being very careful now. Like I said, the back leg isn't going to look like it comes down as far because as we look towards something, the things that are farther away, they can kind of seem like they're kind of shorter, things like that. Okay, and then we can have her tail kind of swinging up here to swat the flies away. I like that. She looks like a very curious cow. Okay. And then I'm going to grab my black colored pencil. I don't know where my regular colored pencils went. They have disappeared, boys. So I'm just going to use this one. That's okay. We're distance learning. We're using what we have right now. So cows are prey animals, so they're eyes are more set into the sides of their heads so they have that nice wide field of vision just like rabbits do. Nostrils. Mouth. She looks like a very unimpressed cow. Right, I'm going to take my dark brown and I'm just going to kind of put in some detail around her eyes, and around her ears, shade a little bit on her nose. If you look at like horses and cows and other like ruminant animals, they have like these very like this whole front of their head is just one bone and it makes the front of their head look very strong because it is. I don't know if you've ever like stood in front of a horse and then they toss their head up. It does not feel good. Cause that's all just bone coming out to greet you. Okay, and then we're gonna do something a little fun. I'm gonna take my dark red here and we're gonna do just a little shading like along her legs. So just to add a little extra color in and just kind of show, again, just like we did with like the stripes on the tiger, it kind of shows like where the curve of her muscles is. You kind of show where like there's areas a little more shadowy, like, um, like where her legs meet up with her body is because there's going to be shadows there or like the curve of her side, they'll be a little more shadowy. And add some to the tuft of hair on her tail. She just gives her some dimension. Along here under her head, there'll be shadow. And then I can even add some to her face. Because when you look at a brown cow, they can have a little bit of red to their coat. Now who can remember the names of these cattle, the dairy cattle that are brown? The Holsteins that are the black and white cows. But the brown ones are called Jerseys. And 
my grandma would be so proud to hear me tell you that because she used to run dairy farms here in the valley. That's what she grew up doing, was dairying. And when she and my grandpa got married, they worked on dairy farms until eventually they had their own farms. They used to live not far from the school, actually, out on Wainema Way. My dad went to Oak Grove School. And he grew up on a dairy farm. I do believe they had Jersey cows. There we go. So we're just layering some color, just like, just like we did with Mount McLaughlin. Go back with my dark brown and I'm going to add even more shadows here, just a little bit. This gives this cow a nice, beautiful, rich coat. So especially in the areas that would be really dark. That's where we want to have this dark brown. Under here in the curve of her belly. Here's our forward-looking cow. I'm going to take my white pencil really quickly and I'm just going to kind of blend a little bit where all these colors meet up. Just makes it look nice and smooth. Anywhere where your color might be jagged, it will just kind of help everything come together. Yeah, look what that did for her chest there. Okay, so back here in the pasture, so we've got front of the pasture where Little Miss is standing here, and then we have back of the pasture back here. And so back here, only about this big, there's gonna be another cow back here, and she is just gonna be grazing peacefully. So to do a cow from the side, just going to do a little rectangle, not a big one. We want her to look a lot smaller because she's farther away. So that's where those hips will be. Her shoulders, so just going to do a little rectangle, kind of round it at the bottom because that's where their big belly is. And then her neck's gonna come down, kind of, kind of that triangle shape again. Almost a rectangle, because cows have like thick necks. And then at the bottom of that, there's a triangle that's kind of at just a slightly different angle, and that's her head. oval at the end for her nose. There, see? And then we'll just do her legs. I don't have to be super detailed because like I said, she's far away out in the field. Nice little peaceful pasture scene. Little shape 
open an ear here. There we go. Okay, we're just going to fill that color in a little bit better. And then, just like I said before, you can add a little shade in there with the dark red. brown too. Just a shadow. You know, these creatures are part of nature and nature is never static. It's never just one thing all the time. It's always changing. Colors are different. Okay. Like I said, we don't see as much detail on this cow. We can see a tiny little eye here. Show a little bit of detail there for her ear. Okay. Let's put in some grass for these ladies. Alright, so we're just going to start with a little bit of long grass. And our first cow's hooves here. I am not good at hooves. And that's okay because when cows are standing in the long grass, you can't see their hooves anyway. So it's not really realistic to draw them with their hooves standing out here in the pasture. You wouldn't be able to see that in real life. And you know, we're going for realism here. away cow. Just to put a little bit of texture there around her too. Bright green in. Some highlights in there. of the grass. So they are standing just in one big field, so I'm just going to put grass all around them. And the grass really isn't going to end until like up here. So it's a big open green field that these cows have to roam in. Be careful not to color over your cows. And just like we did with Mount McLaughlin and everything else, there where we're coloring in a big field of color, we want our pencil strokes to be going the same direction. It doesn't look scribbly, it looks nice and neat, and it also kind of mimics the effect of long grass. So be careful of my faraway cow here.
far away cat looks like she's very much enjoying chewing her cud, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. Doesn't that just sound delicious? Just take your time, don't feel like you have to rush. You can just take your time and take nice long strokes where you can. And you know, it you, it should, it should if you took your time. Even add in a little bit of brown into that grass, right? Grass is not perfectly green. There's imperfections in it too. And you know, cows are a lot hardier than horses are. So you can put a cow on a field that isn't quite suitable for horses, or you can feed them hay that, you know, wouldn't be healthy for horses, but for the cows, it's just fine because their digestive systems are so much more developed than horses. You know, they have that whole chamber that sets aside, sets aside harmful little bits that would hurt the cow. And then they have that filtering chamber. These are all things that horses don't have. And horses are, you know, Horses have been bred so much for beauty and for show. Not that I don't love horses, I do. But you have, there's sacrifices you make for that. And so it's just made a horse's health a lot more delicate in this day and age. So you have to be careful what they eat. Cows, not so much. Put them on grass, they're happy. over here on the side of our pasture maybe this is where the barn is for our ladies here can't see all of it maybe there's a barn up here it's got like one of those cool hay lofts Oh, 
old barns that you would see out on like at like Hanley Farm or um, Sage Road or something like that. just the lovely blue sky around our cows here. And you could do pencil shadings for this if you wanted to. So some really nice pencil shading effect used with the tiger and the sky behind her. But you could do that here too. I happen to not know where my pencil sharpener is at the moment, so I'm doing colored pencil. Block crayon is also an option. If you want to use your block crayons. So many ways to make a sky. Just take your time, make it look beautiful. Not all over it. I'm just going to pick a few spots. Sometimes the sky has little spots where it's darker. It depends on where the sun is shining or it's hitting. Maybe down here close to the ground. Just kind of make it darker. It kind of sets it off. You can see where the land and the sky meet. happy cows out in there. Nice lush green field. Enjoying that beautiful green grass on a bright sunny day. Just blending a little bit. Okay. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed making all those different shapes with me to come up with these animals. And I will see you back here tomorrow and we will do the cow poem. And it looks like maybe the day after that we are on to Fox. So enjoy and everybody have a great day.